Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. The Wastelanders is going live in less than 4 weeks and now it's the perfect time to start preparing for all the new content coming with the third DLC. Let me show you 15 ways to get ready for the Wastelanders. We have been waiting for the Wastelanders DLC for a very long time, but now the release date is right around the corner on April 7. Besides that, half of the world is at home on quarantine because of the COVID-19 virus, so now it's really the ideal moment to prepare yourself as much as possible for the new content. I'm going to show you 15 different things you can do to prepare and ensure minimal disruption while playing the new DLC. If you get most of the things done in this guide, I can assure you won't need to lose much time farming for essential resources later on, such as ammo, aid items, buffs, and even food. Let me show you how to organize and get things done while you still have the time. Well, down on my list we have something not essential at all. As you surely know, NPCs are coming to Appalachia and Bethesda has already announced you will be able to recruit companions. They will stay with you at your camp and you can even spawn different ones using their camp items, one at a time though. So, this means you should adjust your camp for one more person, if you are thinking about recruiting allies, of course. I have already added one extra room to my base with all the basic commodities, a bed, a table and chair, a sofa, plenty of storage, a weapons case, and some decoration, of course. I decided to make it with neutral colors, since I don't know who will be staying at my camp, if a male or a female character. I also added a sleeping bag on my living room, just in case. If you are a role player, then I am sure you will have a lot of fun preparing your camp for the arrival of your future guests. For now, I think I am all set up, so let's move on to the next point. Leveling up is a great idea right now, there is not much else to do anyway, but there are two main reasons for getting more levels in preparation for the Wastelanders. First, you might need the perk points to get new perk cards. During PAX East 2020, Bethesda announced that bows will have their own perk cards, so there might be more. It wouldn't surprise me if they introduced a few other new perks, especially with the legendary player system coming soon. Moreover, you will have to choose a faction to side with. Yep, there is a point of no return with the raiders or the settlers, and that means you are limited to do your middleman job. However, if you have two characters, you can go ahead and do both questlines. Why choose one faction when you can get both? If you don't have a second character, then now is the time to level up and ensure you can experience both questlines when the DLC goes live. I have a guide on how to boost your experience gain, so feel free to check it out if you are not sure how to speed up your leveling. Let's move on. Another clever way to prepare for the Wastelanders is to discover locations that will be key points in the upcoming content. Of course, we don't know about every single new or reward location out there, but Bethesda has unveiled over a dozen of them already. I have made a video showing 15 locations that will be featured in the upcoming DLC. So if you have no idea what or where they are, go ahead and check it out. For now, I am showing you only 5, possibly the most important ones at the Crashed Space Station, for example. You will be able to find the Raiders' main settlement. Then you can head to Spruce Knob, and the current workshop will be replaced by the settlers' main settlement, the foundation, which will have a surface and underground part as well. Anyhow, we should also unlock the Overseer's Camp, if you haven't yet, since the new Wayward Inn will be located a few meters from there, just across the road past the bridge. Now, at the Kanawa County Cemetery, you will find their church, which will be drastically reworked into a cult of the Motman location. Lastly, we have Watoga. There will be a new entry point somewhere to go underground, so make sure to visit the city if you have recently started playing or moved into a new character. 
This can save you lots of time later, especially if you don't have any nearby locations unlocked yet. And the good spirit of preparation, now it's a great time to sort your inventory in stash to make space for all the upcoming items. For instance, make sure to sell or scrap all legendary gear you no longer use, drop or sell items you don't want and keep only essential items you're going to need. The logic is simple, but I know how hard it can be to sort everything out. But in the end, it is worth it. Imagine collecting dozens of new items and then you don't have any space to store them. Going around over encumbered is not an option, so you will eventually have to sort your storage at some point. Unless you have many alts, then you can freely sort and share the load between your characters. If not, then you really should start making some space. Well, this point is a small trick I found a while ago. You can store most of your notes in holotapes and free your inventory. They don't wait anything, so it only takes some time to manually move them to the stash. Now, why should you do this if these items wait nothing at all? Well, it will ensure you get to keep track of all the new lore you're about to pick up from and for the new quests. I think it will simplify your life in several ways. First, if you enjoy reading notes and listening to holotapes, then the selection is already done. Secondly, it will allow you to find specific items much quicker. Note that some quests require you to read or listen to these lore items. In this case, you won't need to scroll down 20 times until you find the required item. It can really come in handy in the future. Just saying, you don't have much to lose here. The Grafton Pawn Shop questline is live for some months now, but it's still an unmarked quest. There is no Pip-Boy entry or rewards for completing it. I believe that will change when the Wastelanders DLC goes live. However, doing this quest now will save you at least one hour of gameplay later, since you need to visit different locations and collect over a dozen of items. Why should you do this questline though? Well, one of the parts will give you an unique code to access Vault 79, which is a brand new location for the Wastelanders. It's even on the promotional banners for a very long time now. I have created a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete this questline, so if you'd like to do it, check the video and you will get all your questions answered, such as how to start it, where to go and what to collect. I am confident you will need to head to this vault sooner or later in Wastelanders, so this is an excellent way to prepare and be effective. This point is not suitable for everyone. If you are really satisfied with your build, then you can skip to the next point. For everyone else, you might want to consider retouching your attributes towards Charisma, since this attribute will be very important with Wastelanders DLC. As typical of Fallout games, Charisma will unlock special dialogue options quite often, and if your character is not charismatic at all, you won't be able to access these exclusive options. Of course, there will be options for other attributes, but you won't see them as often. It seems like Charisma and Perception will be the top attributes according to Bethesda. Again, if you rather not touch your build, you can always boost your Charisma later with aid items or even gear, so don't worry for now. This point is exclusively for PTS players. If you got invited to the private test server, then you are or should be aware of most of the new content. No spoilers here, I promise but I would strongly recommend PTS players to make a list to get organized. What quests would you like to do first, locations of interest to visit, items you would like to get, where to find them, and how to recruit different companions, for example. That sort of crucial information that might skip your mind at some point. After all, Bethesda is releasing all the new content at once and it can easily get overwhelming especially when you have done most of it in the past. That's why a quick list can help you stay organized and ensure you won't miss anything you have discovered during your PTS experience. Make sure to use all that knowledge, I surely will try to follow that mindset. Well, as you surely know, both legendary armor and weapons can spawn with effects that boost your attributes. 
I don't recommend saving a set for every attribute for obvious reasons, but I would strongly recommend you to keep some gear that boosts at least charisma and or your favorite attribute. Weapons are also handy to have since the stats stack on top of armor pieces. You could use so many strategies here, for example getting a full set for your lowest attribute to ensure you can get all the special dialogues for it. I have been keeping mostly charisma and luck items, but as I said, it all depends on your point of view and preferences too. Heck, if you are using an unwielding set, then you probably don't need any extra gear stats, except for endurance, of course. One of my top recommendations to prepare is to farm lots of caps. We are expecting many new items and plants to come with the Wastelanders DLC. There are dozens of NPCs coming too, and some of them will surely be traders, which means you need a currency to purchase stuff. Either way, players will also be selling new items for caps. In the end, you will be needing caps to acquire all sorts of items, one way or the other. Therefore, farming as many caps as you can is a great idea right now, don't you think? You should farm caps in your alts as well, if you have any, that is, to go over the 30k caps limit per character. I have several caps farming guides, I am leaving some links here in case you are wondering how to make more than 1400 caps per day, the vendor pool limit right now. My favorite ways are to farm mega slots and sell junk items to other players. Well, happy farming! How often does your gear break? I am using repair kits on a daily basis and that makes me realize how important they are. You can always go ahead and manually repair your gear, but then you need to farm different types of junk, which can take some time. I strongly advise you to do Scorch Earth events and to stack up repair kits in preparation for the Wastelanders. This way you can repair all your armor pieces and weapons anywhere you go with just a few clicks. It will save you a lot of time and even spare you from sticky situations. Imagine your best weapon breaks during an instance or a quest line. that could be really bothersome, right? That's why you should always have some repair kits at hand. Remember, you can also use your free or purchased atoms to get some from the atomic store. Always be prepared. Another obvious prep point is stacking up on ammo. Even if you have a melee build, you surely go around with at least one ranged weapon, right? Well, you need plenty of ammo if you want to fire these ranged weapons, and it's not convenient to run out of ammo in the middle of a fight. That could delay your Wastelanders experience and affect your questline immersion. That's why you should ensure you have plenty of ammo for your main fire weapons right now. You can either collect materials and do a mass crafting or visit player camps to purchase basic ammo for caps. If you are using ultrasight ammo, then you should focus on crafting, players hardly sell ultrasight ammo, after all it is quite difficult to craft. Overall make sure to get thousands of ammo and you should be fine, at least for a little while. Something else that can easily slow you down is food farming. It doesn't take long, but it is extremely tedious and boring. I am often hungry and thirsty, plus parasites love me, and sometimes I only notice the disease when my hunger bar is low. As such, I advise you to save canned food to use during the Wastelanders DLC. It's always faster to simply eat cans on the go then to head to your camp, collect veggies and water, boil it, and then cook some soups or go to a location, kill animals, gather the meat and then cook. As I said, it doesn't take too long, but it can interrupt your main goal, which is experiencing the new content in the Wastelanders. My favorite places to farm canned food is at Sunday Brothers Cabin in the locked basement. You can usually find over one dozen of food, cans, some drinks and ingredients like spices. At Watauga it's also very common to find dozens of drinks and canned food, you just have to look around. 
especially on top of tables and the restaurants. There are several in the city, so it is a long run, but when I really want to farm for it, Watoga is my second place. And it is a very rich one, as you can see by the footage that I am showing you here. Don't forget the roof as well, because there is like a cafe, uh, restaurant place with lots of tables where you can also find drinks, food, spices, all sorts of things. Aid items will be high on demand during the Wastelanders DLC because first they can boost your attributes and make you stronger, which is a great benefit by itself, but secondly they can easily help you unlock special dialogue options and go beyond your current specs. It will work like a quick fix to your build. If you are missing just a few points in Charisma, for example, then use a Grape Mentat and things should be solved. If you need more Perception, then take a Calmax or a Daddy O. There are 8 items to boost any attributes, so all you have to do is find them and keep them at hand when the DLC goes live. If you would like to farm 8 items, then consider checking my farming guide featuring the best locations in game, where you can find dozens of medical containers to loot twice, using the Farmer Farmer perk, of course. Some of my favorite locations are the Watauga EMS, the Morgantown Airport, and the AVR Medical Center. I believe 8 items can really be a game changer and allow you to access new dialogue options, so don't discard them. I am sure you will need them later on. Ultimately, you should keep an unwielding set at hand because you can easily boost all your attributes except endurance by just going on low HP. Imagine you need 10 luck for a dialogue option and you have no luck at all. It's difficult to get there with just 8 items and plus 1 luck gear pieces. However, with an unwielding set, that's pretty easy to achieve. Now, getting wielding pieces is a difficult and expensive task. They are rare drops, at least for me, and players usually sell them for thousands of caps each. But if you start now, you might be able to get a few armor pieces, which will probably unlock all dialogue options during the Wastelanders, and give you a total freedom of choice. I think wielding is the key to meet all dialogue special requirements, I would totally get a cheap start set if I wasn't using it already. Better safer than sorry. The choice is always yours. There is plenty you can do to prepare for the Wastelanders, as you can see. But the things you should do also depend on many factors, such as your preferences, available time and current build. Did I miss any preparation points? Do let me know in the comments section below. As for me, I still need to do some more farming, but overall, I think I'm fairly prepared for what's about to come. I'm really excited and glad the release day is getting closer and closer. That's all for this guide, I hope you found my tips useful. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for all your support. Consider subscribing if you just got here and if you'd like to support my content even further then go ahead and become a member here in the channel or unlock one of my patron tiers, that's also an option. The links are below the video as usual. That's everything for now, thank you again and I will see you all very very soon in the next video. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!